I will never forget this moment. I believe it is the defining moment of his presidency. We screwed that whole thing up, and we'll get to some heartbreaking video about that in a second. And when those 13 bodies came home, Joe Biden stood there on the tarmac and checked his watch multiple times when he was supposed to be honoring those families and honoring the fallen. And it's not a small thing. It's not a little internet thing. It shows everything about the level of care from this human being for this nation. And you remember when he was asked about it, just horrific. I mean, the country collapsed. It's a nightmare for them. Our people are dead. Let's not forget about the fact we murdered 10 civilians, 10 innocent civilians with the drone. And then he's asked about it later on. And he just, he can't help himself. And maybe it's because his brain has melted into tapioca pudding at this point in time. He can't help but just sound so cold. That was a couple days ago. No, no one told me. I mean, well, no one told me that, that a way that we could have done it any better. Certain things that are just like, for example, Afghanistan. Well, I've been against that war in Afghanistan for the, from the very beginning. We're spending $300 million a week in Afghanistan over 20 years. Now, how do you, you know, everybody says you could have gotten out without any, anybody being hurt. No one's come up with a way to ever indicate to me how that happens. Which is, of course, an insane idea. You shut down a very secure Air Force base, and then as the country collapsed, you scrambled because it didn't look very good politically, and so you sent a bunch of Marines, soldiers, sailors, and airmen back into a civilian air base that couldn't possibly be secured. So after your own insanity, your own ineptitude, a bunch of young Marines found themselves standing guard outside of a civilian Air Force base, and they eventually got blown up. Would you like to know, would you like to hear from one of the people who was there, minus an arm and a leg now today, would you like to hear from the other side what it looks like when you have insanity, incompetence, nefarious, whatever you want to call it? You want to hear from the other side? This is Sergeant Andrews Vargas. Over the communication network, we passed that there was a potential threat and an ID attack imminent. This was as serious as it could get. I requested engagement authority while my team leader was ready on the M110 semi-automatic sniper system. The response, leadership did not have the engagement authority for us. Do not engage. I requested for the battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Brad Whited, to come to the tower to see what we did. While we waited for him, psychological operations individuals came to our tower immediately and confirmed the suspect met the suicide bomber description. He eventually arrived and we showed him our evidence, the photos we had of the two men, we reassured him of the ease of fire on the suicide bomber. Pointedly, we asked him for engagement authority and permission. We asked him if we could shoot. Our battalion commander said, and I quote, I don't know, end quote. Myself and my team leader asked very harshly, well, who does? Because this is your responsibility, sir. He again replied, he did not know, but would find out. We received no update and never got our answer. Eventually, the individual disappeared. To this day, we believe he was a suicide bomber. We made everyone on the ground aware Operations had briefly halted, but then started again. Plain and simple, we were ignored. Our expertise was disregarded. No one was held accountable for our safety. About 1730, Staff Sergeant Darren Hoover, friend and mentor. Came to get me from the tower to go help find an Afghan interpreter in the crowd. Ten minutes passed. <clears throat> Then a flash <clears throat> and a massive wave of pressure. I'm thrown 12 feet onto the ground, but instantly knew what had happened. I opened my eyes to Marines dead or unconscious lying around me. A crowd of hundreds immediately vanished in front of me and my body was catastrophically wounded with 100 to 150 ball bearings now in it. Our military members, and veterans deserve our best because that is what we give to America. The withdrawal, <clears throat> the withdrawal was a catastrophe in my opinion. And there was an ex inexcusable lack of accountability and negligence. The 11 Marines, one sailor, <clears throat> and one soldier that were murdered that day have not been answered for. That was Sergeant Vargas Andrews again. No right arm, no leg. He had his stomach ripped open. And obviously, as you can see from him, the worst of it was 
that he got to wake up and see all of his dead friends around him. The Biden administration did that. They're responsible for that. And then it's maybe just as sad that our response to that was to send in a drone strike and we murdered 10 completely innocent people, many of them children, six if memory serves me right. This country, I, I don't know what's happened to us, but it's not good. But either way, you look at videos like that and the recruitment numbers, which are in free fall in this country, they do make sense, right? I don't know how many emails I've gotten since Afghanistan to my show telling me, Jesse, this is why I won't let my son join. Or from the young men themselves, Jesse, this is why I won't join. I'm going to go do something else. Jesse, I'm going to go do something else. This country, including military leadership, not just Joe Biden, that battalion commander, all of them, the military leadership in this country is a disgrace. And our men and women on the ground deserve so much better than this crap. All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right.